Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's a fact, buddy. You want an example to learn how to live? You look, read the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Always for somebody else. Always for somebody. You are not wasting your time helping somebody. That's right. My pastor used to say, God won't hold it against you for trying to help somebody. I've, I've heard people say, well, I helped so-and-so, and they squandered it, or they took advantage of me. I'll never help nobody else. That's just an excuse. Uh, if, they, if they misuse it, that's their problem. God will still bless you. God will bless you for being good to people. He sure will. I've got that baby over there, Stephan. Uh, Rachel, you got it? Sent a brand new baby. First time he's been to church. Done laid out two weeks. Might be, stand up and show him. Everybody, let's give him a big hand there. Hey, man, brand new. Uh, hey, oh, hallelujah. Jumped up and shouted there. <laughs> good, good job. Good job. Hey, man. You know, they say... Uh, a uh, uh, man's work is never done, but I mean, man works from, what is it, son? Yeah, you know, son, but woman's work is never done. And, and a, a woman that has a little boy, when she puts him to bed at night, she can honestly say she's worked from sun up to sundown. A buddy, they'll run with you. Frankie, last night, he's wide open at 12 o'clock at night last night. I, it's hard to believe. I had to drag him out this morning, buddy. I dragged him to... Uh, Presley's at our house. Marty is at the house. Kelly left at 720. I went there and I dragged Frankie. I said, Frankie, I'm going to church. And he said, oh. I said, I you can stay here by yourself. We're going to church. And he rolled out and said, I'll go. And, and I've been home. No breakfast, nothing like that. We run through the dollar store and got him a honey bun and a Mountain Dew. And uh, that, that's a whole lot better for your kids than letting them lay out of Sunday school and feeding them a good breakfast. A whole lot better. A whole lot better. Ain't going to kill them once in a, every day or two. Uh, <laughs> no, amen. Could have made them fast like I did. I didn't eat breakfast. All right. Uh, Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. My philosophy is if you get home late and you ain't got time to eat, to, uh, Time to come to church, could eat supper, leave supper off, come to church. You can eat, you, know, you ain't gonna starve to death. Ain't nobody in here looks like you're starving. Acts chapter number one. This would be the ascension of Christ, and as he left, uh, his instruction here for the church. Acts chapter number one, verse number four, and being assembled together with them, commanded them. He's commanded them. He's our chief commander. You know, they say the commander in chief, that's Jesus Christ to the church. Commander in chief. That they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. That's the way angels look. Angels look just like men when they appeared in the Bible. You couldn't tell the difference between a young man and an angel. They're an appearance. That's what an angel is, an appearance. And appeared in human form here. Which said, ye men of Galilee... Why stand you gazing up into heaven? Why are you doing stand around and looking at the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen them go. I want to preach a few minutes this morning. My, my subject is commands from the commander. Commands from the commander or mandates. A mandate 
is an official order or a commission to do something, carry out some kind of order or a course of action. Like, like in the military, in the military, they have a, a mandate, they have a command, and everybody is supposed to obey that command. Now, the Lord is our chief captain. He's our commander in chief. He left us here on this earth to do his work, and right before he went back, he said, now look, everybody look at me, you go into all the world and preach the gospel everywhere to every creature. Deep, deep, dark corners of the jungle, high part of Alaska, down in, over, over in, in Canada, Asia, Africa, Europe, China, Japan, uh, the, 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 the islands. Uh, you go and preach to every single person. And then Paul told Timothy, I charge you. He said, I charge you, Timothy. I'm giving you, a, I'm giving you a, 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 a charge. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. You know this scripture. Now, uh, this, this morning, I want to take that and take them as commands from our commander. You and me are in the army. All the little kids you sang, uh, I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. You know that little song? That's a Bible school song? That is true. The Bible pictures us as God's army. Every saved person is a soldier in God's army. The old songs used to reflect that because the old people wrote songs years ago used to read the Bible. And it was onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. You'll never hear that in a modern day church. A modern day church does not resemble an army marching to war. We are an army under a commander marching to war. We are not called to get along with everybody. We are called to preach the gospel to the whole world. Can you understand that? You understand? Our mission on this earth is not to be friendly and make everybody like us so they'll come and give money. That ain't our job. Our job is to preach the gospel to every creature and may the Spirit of God deal with their heart. Let me ask you something. Does the average church you know nowadays resemble an army? I mean, there's no, there's not, there's no resemblance to an army. The average church nowadays Honest to goodness, people, I've been pastoring. Uh, I've been I, I've been pastoring a uh, good night, uh, oh, a long time, over forty years. And uh, the average church nowadays is no more resembles a, 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 an army. Good night. It, it's more like a gigantic nursery, which you got a bunch of overgrown babies that you have to pet and coddle all the time, or they'll get mad and stay home. That's about the way the average church is. And I don't mean that as an indictment to y'all, y'all, but good night, people. We're not supposed to be whiny, crybabies, getting our feelings hurt over every little tiny thing and getting offended if you look at you cross-eyed or if I walk by you and don't speak or something. We're soldiers in an army, people. We're supposed to be fighting a battle. We're supposed to gird up our sword, brother. We're supposed to march. It, it ain't supposed to be fun all the time. It's not supposed to be. Uh, you say, well, I just went to church and it didn't make me feel bad. That ain't why you go to church. Well, we go to church, as, uh, as uh, Derek mentioned when he first got up here, to praise him, to praise God. You don't praise him because you feel good. You praise him because of who he is and what he is and what he's done. We're, we're soldiers in an army. You know what we're doing over there Saturday? We're not going over there to show off. We're going over there to be a, a, in the army and, we're, and, and, and draw back from blood on that sword of that book right there. Uh, Cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from, from blood. What if you had a big old army fighting over here and here's the battle and you got two or three people out here that are trying to fight their best, cutting heads off and everything else and everybody else standing there saying, well, he didn't beat me. <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, my goodness, y'all. We are soldiers in God's army. Now, let me say a couple things about that this morning. And the first command our commander left us, he gave us an unchallenged message. Our message is clear. Our message is plain. Our message has not changed one bit from that time he gave it until right now. Go ye into all the world and preach what? 
the gospel. Not a social uh, media outlet where you can be friendly with everybody and be all inclusive and call all the world's religions together and make everybody love one another and have peace on earth. That's not our, that's not our message. Our message is repent and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we, we look y'all, uh, them old, them old apostles went out, they preached, they got killed. They got killed for it. Everybody wanted but one. They got killed for what they was doing. And I ain't trying to sound big and tough because I ain't big and tough. But I'll tell you one thing, the day may come when we'll have to back up what we say we believe, maybe with our own lives. Thousands have done it before us and we ain't no better than they are. I'm telling you, it's loud to get rough before we get out of here. I hope not. Uh, but if it does, God give us grace to keep standing where we've always stood. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, they, they're on them martyrs, our forefathers, they fought, they bled down there at King's Mountain, just down the road down there. They, they went around there and surrounded that hill and shot that guy coming off there, the Battle of King's Mountain, and there's a bunch of Baptist preachers around down there, and their, and their church members, they all got together, and, and they, they, they say that changed the course of the war, people, and it saved our country, and, and they set up Baptist churches everywhere, and them old men of God stood. They stood. They stood. They were, they were like, um, uh, they, they were like the great uh, preachers of old and, and in the days gone by. And, and they were like John Bunyan who wrote the famous book Pilgrim Progress. That's the way they were. Back in the old days when a man was called to preach, he didn't preach for money. He didn't, he didn't leave out messages on hell and messages on sin and messages on homosexuality and messages on that so to get a bigger crowd more money. You don't preach for money, people. You don't preach for money. I don't preach for money. Are you kidding me? You don't think I can do better financially doing something? I ain't complaining. God took care of me. I'm not preaching for money. I'm preaching because God called me to preach. And if I never get a dime, that's all right. I'll preach on the street like I did when I first started out. Man, that's that's right. right, brother. I'll get me a job selling liniment or, or, or fuller brushes. And uh, ain't no such thing as that no more. That's what old timers used to have, uh, fuller brushes or some kind of liniment soap or something like that. I'm telling you this morning we have a mandate. And old John Bunyan, he got thrown in jail. And you know what they done? They threw him in jail for preaching. And they said, you can't do that. In the name of Jesus, you can't do that. And when John Bunyan uh, was in jail, his little fam family and his daughter come to see him. And his daughter was nearly blind. And she comes and said, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, we miss you. Daddy, we need you at home. Daddy, we need you. We love you. He reached through the bars. Honey, I love you too. Daddy misses you too. And mom, they didn't have no welfare. They didn't have no food stamps. They didn't have no government programs. Brother, if you eat in them days, you caught it, shot it, growed it, or stole it. That's the only way you got food. You shot it, growed it, caught it, stole it, or grew it in a garden. And listen, he said, honey, I love you too. And you know the authority went to him, and they, they let his little daughter hear them. And them authorities said, John Bunyan, if you'll promise... You'll never preach again. We'll let you out today. And John Bunyan was a man. And stood there with his little girl standing there blind, nearly blind. And he said, if you let me out today, I'll preach tomorrow. Amen. That's a soldier. Amen. That's a soldier. You say, well, I don't think that was right. Yet yeah, you're a typical American trying to be politically correct and think, oh, he shouldn't have done his family like that. He, he set a good example for his daughter. I bet you she's in heaven right now. I guarantee you that girl's saved in heaven right now and see very good. I'm telling you, look, listen, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying me mean to your family. I'm just saying, look, people, the gospel is more important than my feelings, your feelings, our money, our job, our house, our home. The that we have a command from the commander to get it out. Somebody, somebody saw me the other day and they said, well, the old Danny Castle, you still preaching? I took that as a very bad insult. How dare you? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Don't you ever. How could you say something that preposterous, brother? That's ridiculous. Of course, duh. You ain't never uncalled to preach. Once called, always called. That's what he said. The gifts 
and the calling of God are without repentance. You might do something stupid and mess it up, but God's always got a call on your life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an unchallenged message. Amen. That's right, brother. Old Dr. Joe Henry Hankins was a great preacher, and they told he got real sick and had to go to the doctor. And, and uh, he, he, here's what they said. They described him as preaching with intensity and force. That's what he described his preaching. How's that man preach? Intense, forceful. That's what the word preach means. And he went to the doctor, and the doctor told him, he said, if you don't stop, your life is going to be cut short. And Dr. Hankins read in Ezekiel 33, where he said, if I fail to warn the wicked from their wicked way, their blood will be on my hand. It doesn't matter if my life is cut short, I'll do what God told me to do. I challenge every person in here. You're not might be a preacher. Um, you don't have to be a preacher to preach God. You don't understand that. Uh, everybody in here can tell the gospel. Everybody in here can witness to your neighbor. Everybody in here can be a, a soldier for, in the Lord's army. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, we don't. It, it's, it, we're supposed to be an army. We're not supposed to be a big glorified coffee shop, nursery sort of a cry, baby where everybody's just so nicey, nicey, and everything's nice and nothing's bad. That ain't a church. That ain't a church. That ain't a church. It's a social club. Old John Bunyan said, let me out today. I'll preach tomorrow. Our sissified preachers of this generation ought to be ashamed of themselves. They're standing in the way of God really working, tricking people into making them think they're a man of God. Amen. I'm telling you, we have, number two, an unfinished task. We have an unfinished task. You hear me this, this morning? We are living in the most wicked, filthy time, no doubt, in the history of this world. There is no doubt in my mind Sodom and Gomorrah was not, a, not any worse than what we're seeing in this world today. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have internet. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have uh, uh, satellite and TV screens. And, uh, I mean, and it was bad, but not like we are seeing today. We are supposed to be seeking the lost. Lost people are everywhere. Let me tell you something, people. Here's how the world changed in the last few years. I told them last night, when I was growing up, I mean, when I was little, we had, I think we could get three channels on our TV. And the worst thing is on there then was Ricky and Lucy, and they and, and they'd, they'd, I'm, I'm just say a fat, they didn't cuss. Uh, worst thing they ever seen. John Mitchell said worst thing he ever seen on TV when his kid was Roy Rogers kissed his horse on the net one time, <laughs> and he said uh, he, that was it. That's the way the world used to be, and we had an antenna outside, and it was like this sticking on the outside, and it'd say you want to watch Channel Three or Channel Thirteen. That's Asheville, or, or Channel 4 at Spartanburg, right, Debbie? All right. And one of them, or one of us, would say, go out there and turn it. If you want to watch Channel 3, somebody had to go out there and turn it, and turn it. Whoa! No! No! Back a little bit! No! Oh, oh, yeah. There it is! Stop! Right there! And then you go in the house, and the wind would blow, and it'd go off again. It'd just be fine. That's true. How many of y'all ever seen that? Look at that. Hands all over this place. And look, that wasn't... And back then, back then, you could let your kids watch anything that's on TV. Anything. You don't have to worry about it. Turn TV on. Let them watch cartoons. Uh, like Listen, people. Are you listen to me this morning? 93% of boys, I'm talking underage boys, view pornography. And 62% of girls. 93% watch filthy, perverted stuff on their phone. Nine out of ten boys and six out of ten girls. It ain't no wonder everything's so messed up. They found children as ten years old being sold like dock 15 men a night and sell a 12 year old girl to her. You don't think we're living in a messed up world? You don't think there's a time when churches need to pray? 
You don't think we need the power of God in our house in, in, like we used to have it anymore. And the bad thing is the world's got worse. The church has got cold and backslid. And most of them, brother, you can hear a gnat burp on the back row on Sunday morning. These churches in this town, people ain't been saved in 20 years. And brother, we ain't batting a thousand. But I'll tell you one thing. I believe that we have a job to do and that God's called us to do a job. And we better get that job done. Fulfill the ministry that God gave us. That's why we're running buses. I've had two or three people tell me lately, Brother Danny, you know what's good about shining light? And I'm hoping I need it bad. I have low self esteem. And they said, That bus ministry. I said, You're right, buddy. God has put his hand on this bus ministry. There, there ain't nothing like it nowhere in this county. And brother, we got them sitting in here. We got a whole a room full of them. I know they're rowdy. I know they get on your nerves. But can you imagine the filth them kids see and the stuff they're around and the only hope they ever have, the only, that the only thing he ever bought was me and that somebody loves them is when somebody picks them up on an old bus and brings them to the house of God and a Sunday school teacher stands up and said, God loves you. Jesus died for you. We are commanded. It ain't time to play church. It ain't time to back off. It ain't time to start canceling services. Lord, I'm, we're too near the end. I, let's don't drop the ball, y'all. Our, our forefathers did it too good. They passed it on. They passed it on. They passed it on. Ed McAbee, J. Frank Norris, all them men got it. They run with that thing. I got saved when I was 18. One of them handed me the torch, and I'm running. Let's don't drop the ball. We might get to be the ones that carry it over the finish line. Amen. Don't drop the ball. There's a mandate from our commander. Michael Jackson's daughter, Paris Jackson, was a star in a movie a couple of years, a few years ago called, I didn't, I just read it, Habit, in which she portrays Jesus as a lesbian, portraying Jesus Christ. Everybody saw what happened at the Olympics. They tried to lie their way out of it and say, well, it didn't really mean that. Whatever. Whatever. You saw the video of Taylor Swift standing up like this, like she's on a cross, had a big T. Oh, that just means T for Taylor. Whatever. Sure it does. You saw the video I showed you of a little nausea, little little puke. Who's done, who stands up and sells. Look, if you don't like that, there's, there's something sick in your brain. He makes, look people, he makes tennis shoes and puts blood in them with 666. That's a devil's mark. You like that? You like the devil? Nothing personal. Baby, you, listen y'all, that, that's what kids are growing up seeing now. We have an unfinished task. Michael Jackson's daughter plays Jesus in a movie. Andrew Murray, who was a missionary to South Africa, had 11 kids. Five of them turned out to be preacher boys. Four of his girls were, were, were preacher's wives. Ten grandsons who were preachers. And 13 missionaries out of his family. Compared those kids to Michael Jackson's kid playing Jesus in a movie. You see how important it is for parents to do right? You see how important it is for you to raise your kids right? I mean, that's, and, and, and we're living in a different day. We have, sec, all, all, I want to say this, unlimited power. Old Hyman Appleman was an old preacher in this country years ago. He used to go around preaching revivals, and he, he, uh, he, he would uh, preach, and a lot of people would get saved. And, and uh, he, he would, like me, he, he'd push people. He'd push people. Get right, get right, get right. And some of them preachers didn't like that. And the preachers in the area, they were a little too dignified for that. And they said, well, his, he comes on a little strong. And he's put, he says, I think we should go talk to him and tell him to, not to really press the people to come to the altar and push people. They, it makes them feel uncomfortable. And maybe he ought to tone it down just a little bit. And they said, well, two of them went over to his motel room where he was staying, preaching that revival. And they said, we'll go talk to him. And they said they went in there, heard him praying. Or something like that. Then they heard him preach that night. And they heard him praying. And one of them guys said, I ain't saying nothing to him. And I said, I ain't neither. They had enough sense to know 
God's hand was on that guy. Look, I ain't a genius, but I know this. If God does have his hand on a man, you better leave him alone, people. I'm, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about any God-called preacher. You better not mess with them. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. They say, we ain't messing with him. You let him do what God called him to do. You let him do what God gave him to do. He had unlimited power. You know what, you know what to do now? Uh, try, try to put on a, some kind of a show to impress people to keep them coming, keep the money coming in. It's all about money. But Ian Bound said this, every good thing in the world is connected with somebody's prayers. Once again, every good work in the world is connected with somebody's prayers. Everybody here today is, was saved in a church or because of one. Every person in here today, you got saved in a church or because of one. Somebody had one going somewhere that preached you the gospel. Amen? That's why we run them buses. We've got to. We've got to as long as God will let us. Churches are quitting by the hundred. And a lot of them are still doing it. Their heart ain't in it. They just do it because we always have. You know? uh, look, people, we, we, our heart's going to be, we got to get it done. We might not can always do it. That bus ministry is the most important outreach ministry in this area that I know anything about. Amen. That's right. That's right. Unlimited power. Ian Bounds wrote them famous books, Power Through Prayer. I would highly recommend them to anybody. You can't find them in a bookstore no more. Bookstores don't even sell Christian material anymore, most of them. You can order them online. There's like seven of them, but the most of them is Power Through Prayer. And that man lived on his knees. More things are wrought on your knees than they are by your, your arguing or your politicking or your friends. We need to hit our knees. We need to hit our knees. We need to hit our knees for Bible school. I got up this morning, you know, I've just been running one thing to the other, one thing to the other. And, and y'all, when I do what I do, is I'd recommend you do this too. And in your business or anything, you get one thing done, you move right on the next one. You get that done, you move right on the next one. You get that done. We don't have no time to waste. We, the Bible says we deem the time because the days are evil. We don't have time to waste, people. Life's passing you by real fast. Here we are, August of 2024. <laughs> We're in the world. It just seemed like two weeks ago. It was, it was Sweetheart Banquet. And then it was Easter. And then it was Youth Rally. And then it was Mother's Day and Father's Day and camp and the trip to Virginia. Now here we are getting ready to start school again. We have some commands from our commander. I'm closing this morning with this thought. If we don't do it, who will? If God's people don't stand up, they sure ain't nobody else going to. Our forefathers stood, God blessed them, and saved their kids. They said this baseball team was looking for the perfect player to be on their team. And they found him. They found him up there in the stands. They have all the answers. They know every mistake the quarterback made in the game. They sit around and drink. And I, you, you got these people. You're a genius. You know what's wrong with everybody. You can pick out everybody's fault, but you, don't, you wouldn't hit a lick of a snake. You wouldn't walk across the driveway to knock on your neighbor's door to witness to them. Yeah, a, a, a baseball player sitting in the stand, a football player sitting up here, ain't, 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 ain't happen nothing. And by the way, it's a lot easier when you're sitting up the stands looking out there watching them. On TV and show an instant replay. Why don't you be wide open down there? What's wrong with you? See, get, that, get, in the, get in the game, buddy. Get in, the, get in the game. Get in church. Get in a good Bible believing church like God wants you to do. Be a part of it. Get on, get, make some outreach. Get your kid in Sunday school. Serve God. Be a, be a soldier for Jesus Christ. He'll bless you for it. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our head bowed. Miss Desi, just come play something softly this morning. I wanted to play something softly this morning. Maybe you're here today. You say, Brother Danny, I may never march in the infantry. 
ride in the cavalry, shoot artillery, but I'm in the Lord's army. And I want to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. Our heads are bowed. She's playing softly. I just slip out of my seat right now and gather around here to the altar and let's pray. If you want to come, just come on right now. Come on. This is invitation. We'll not have no singing. We'll just, uh, that's right. That's right. Thank God. Young people, mamas, daddies, amen. Everybody, let's just gather around here. Say, Lord, I want to be a soldier in God's army. I want to be a soldier in God's army. Amen. You know what's the matter with most churches? Too many chiefs, not enough Indians, brother. That's right. That's right. Let's get in here. Thank God, young people. Thank God, young people. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we want to thank you for the charge that you give young Timothy for the commands that we have received from our great commander. Oh, God. I pray in Jesus' name to you bless Shining Light Baptist Church, Lord, in the days ahead, to reach those that are seemingly unreachable, to love those that are unlovable, to help those that are helpless, to be good to people. It's not good to us or good to you. I pray, God, that you'd help us. Bless our Bible school. Fill it with the Holy Ghost and power. Let some of these kids have seeds of faith planted in them that will live within their heart the rest of their life. Save souls. Do what ought to be done. Get us ready for a big week. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. These are still praying. These are still praying. We'll wait just a few seconds. Amen. These are still praying. We'll wait just a few seconds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God help us. God help us. God help us. Help me. Amen. God help us. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Hearts clear? All right. One more time before we go. Don't miss tonight's service. We're going to have a meeting of all teachers, all workers, Bible school. Tonight after the service, we'll have, we'll have uh, get preaching short, I mean uh, singing short, and get right into preaching. We'll have a meeting tonight, make our final plans for Bible school. It will start Tuesday night. Now I want everybody to be here. If you're here this morning, I want you all here. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Make that little extra sacrifice. Men, we're going to have a work day tomorrow evening. We need somebody to help with the weed eater, y'all. Well, I can't, we can't do it all, just two or three. All that weeds back yonder, and they want to look nice for Bible school. And so we'll, we'll, meet, we'll meet tomorrow evening at 5.30. We'll be mowing. We'll be working over at the new house. And then Tuesday night, Bible school begins. Now, don't let the kids miss it. Wednesday night, they'll, they'll need to bring a, a play clothes to ride the water slide. Tuesday night, they'll be fine, and uh, regular church clothes. So they'll bring something special Wednesday night to change into uh, before we ride the water slide. It's going to be fun. Amen. Amen. All righty. All hearts clear. Be back this evening.